<laughs> Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont. And over there, we got Christopher Draves. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. While you're on the internet and while you're watching this video, um, please go over to Facebook, give us a like and follow while you're on YouTube as well, since you're here, please give us a subscribe and light the lamp by hitting that notification bell. Yeah, I should try to get a hat trick. Yeah. Um, we are one away from 50. Yes. Thank you to everybody, but let's keep on getting them numbers up. All right. So I did a news video earlier for those of you who may not have seen it here's a little update on it all right we knew yossi wasn't playing didn't know the duration he is week to week evan newgold was traded to uh the kansas city mavericks from the florida everblades that is for future considerations they signed max cook from uh the sphl to a contract from the mavericks system so i'm thinking that's what the future consideration is so, with that being said, that is, at this moment, what we know. Yeah, um, and I guess the Yossi injury would be an upper body, if I saw that right. Yes. Um, Whatever it is, it's an upper body of some sort. Um, on a good note, Saros is with the team traveling and is practicing and skating. Yeah, he participated in the morning skate today. I saw that tweeted out by Adam Vigno. All right. So, today... The Nashville Predators or Milwaukee Admirals, <laughs> whatever way you want to look at it, the 2019-2020 uh, Admirals um, team, because that's what it's slowly starting to look like. Which is kind of a good thing, because that youth movement starting to pop up. Um, they, uh, they played the uh, Hurricanes, so this had to be a conundrum for uh, Wolves fans right now. Yeah, right. Both of their parent teams playing each other. <laughs> that ought to have been fun. Anyway, uh, stats. All right. Uh, her, the Carolina Hurricanes outshot the Predators 35-23. Whoa. Carolina dominated at the face-off uh, circle. 61% uh, face-offs won for the Hurricanes, 39% for the Predators. Uh, Predators were 0 for 5 on the power play. Hurricanes were 2 for 6. Uh, Predators had 12 penalty minutes. Hurricanes had 10. Uh, hits were 26-19 for the Hurricanes. Block shots were 21-20 for the Predators. And uh, both teams had nine giveaways. Um, um, very good game. Um from what I saw, uh, I had a little bit of lapse of brain moment and thought the game started at uh, 7 o'clock Central Time. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, but in the first period, Carolina outshot the Preds 15-7. Then the Preds outshot Carolina 13-11 in the second. And uh, Hurricanes outshot the Preds 8-2 in the third. All righty. First yeah. of all, I would like to hope that Brad – Richardson is okay. Uh, he took a slap shot to the ankle yeah, um, and did not return in the third. Yeah, I don't like seeing that because that usually means he's going to be on IR. But let's and at his age, wood. that is not helpful. Yeah, I was going to say, let's knock on wood that don't help or don't happen, I should say. All righty. Scoring in the first, nothing. Uh, scoring in the second, his first in gold. Matt Benning uh, with an assist from Tolvin in his third and Boroveski his second. That was at the 101 mark of the second. Um, Tolvin is now on a four game point streak. Yeah. Um, Ryan Johansson is scored at the 1337 mark with an assist from Dante Fabro, his seventh, and Forsberg, his 17th. Um, Johansson's now on a two-game goal streak. Yep, that was his second of the year. See, after the first two goals, I thought this game was going to be better than it turned out to be, but it was still pretty entertaining. 
All right, then scoring at the 1458 mark was Jordan Stahl with a, his ninth with an assist from Sebastian Ajo, one of the two. Yeah. With his 14th, and Vincent Trocek his 10th. And then yeah, the, Trocek seems to have fun playing against the pros. Um, then at the 1738 mark, uh, Sebastian Ajo got his 10th with an assist from uh, Dougie Hamilton, his 17th. And Vincent Trocek, his 11th, also on the power play. And Dougie Hamilton's a pretty good player. I think he's underrated. All right. Then scoring in overtime was Jordan Stahl at the 425 mark with an assist by Jacob Slavin. Um, in that today uh, was uh, for Nashville was Pecorino. He stopped 32 at 35 with a point nine. 1-4 save percentage. Not a bad night, Pex. Yeah, he played real well tonight. I can't complain about his performance at all. All right, and for uh, Carolina, he it was uh, Alex Nadelkovich. Uh, he stopped 21-23 with a .913 save percentage. Literally 0. Point, or .001 on the difference between save percentage. Yeah. Congratulations, uh, Jeremy Davies. He made his NHL debut tonight for the Predators. Me and Dan had the privilege of watching him play in Milwaukee. Thank you, PK Subban 2.0. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, if you um uh, want to understand the joke, just go look at the PK Subban trade and what number he wears in Milwaukee. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that was cool seeing Tovin and Davies, and yeah, it's nice seeing these Milwaukee guys finally getting their shot the big time. Oh, speaking of uh, shot the big time, uh, there's a uh, certain TV news you might want to break down. One second. I will be getting that in a second. Let me get to the three stars of the game. Three stars of the game was uh, third star was Vincent Trocek with two assists, Sebastian Naho with a goal and an assist, and Jordan Stahl with two goals. Your referees were Tom Shimolensky and Pierre Lambert. Um, your linesmen were Pierre Ricot and Brian Ponchich. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines at oh, the no. current moment. Uh, head coach for Carolina is former captain of theirs, Rod Brendamore. Uh, scratches tonight for Nashville were Rocco Grimaldi, Eric Halla, and Roman Yossi. Scratches tonight for Carolina was Peter Morazic, Jake Gardner, and Timo Terabinen. Yeah, Morazic, I believe he has a broken wrist. Yes. All right. Around the league, uh, Tampa Bay beat Detroit in overtime. Uh, Dallas is currently in the third, winning against Chicago, 5-1. to one. Uh, Pittsburgh beat New York. Uh, the Rangers, 4-2. to two. The Islanders pick up the win over Boston, 2-1 to one in a shootout. Uh, Philadelphia uh, beat Buffalo, 5-4 to four in a shootout. And Washington beat New Jersey, 5-4 to four in overtime. So should <laughs> Buffalo Sabre fans panic? Um, and also, Winnipeg beats Toronto four to three. Buffalo Favors fans, I would not panic at the current moment. Here's the thing. By now, you all know that at this point in the year, if you're I at the bottom say of the standings, something, but I can't. If you're at the bottom of the standings, and, and, and trust me, and trust me, if if you're at this point, much like Nashville and Detroit, you're playing for ping pong balls. I want to say something, but I'm trying to be nice. Yeah. Yeah, you can pretty much read my mind. <laughs> yeah, I know. By the way, for those of you wondering, if you want to know, truly, yes, they're wasting Jack Eichel. Buffalo is dead last in the league. Here's how I see it. They need to adapt the NFL rule as far as the draft because it's getting to the point where teams are so bad for so long that fans are disinterested because with the lottery, 
you're you could be the worst team in the league and pick 15th. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's why I hate the uh, lottery rule. Um, so with that being said, you know, um they are behind Detroit by two points. Mm-hmm. They're behind Ottawa by three. Ottawa's better than them. No way. San Jose is better than them. Anaheim's better than them. Yeah, New Jersey is better than them. I can see that. Um, Detroit's better than them by two points. Yeah, so with that being that. said, they need to either A, fix the coaching there, or B, fix the goaltending there. Which one are you going to do? Because I'm going to tell you right now, whatever it is you guys have been doing is not working. I could kind of double that up with Nashville. We all know how we feel about that one. Yeah, anyways, let's talk about some uh, NHL TV uh, deal news. All right, so the NHL TV deal. NBC is up after this season. So this will probably be their last year at all with any TV rights. They pay $200 million a year to the NHL for the rights to air their games. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, ESPN is in the sum of around a half a billion dollars. Whoa, they're looking to give the NHL 500 mil? Yeah. So they're in it about that much. So with that being said, I would not be surprised to see them on ESPN2, ESPN, and... ESPN Plus, the streaming service. I got a feeling there's going to be a bunch of games They've already been today. doing that over the last couple years. But I'm pretty sure they're going to continue that. Um, NHL TV... We'll still keep theirs because, you know, that's straight from the teams and their TV product. But what if this is the slow uh, erasing of NHL TV? Um, They would not be able to do that at the current moment because most teams have a private deal with, say, you know, their whatever their local TV market is. Well, every team has a local TV agreement, but this is like just all the nationally televised games we're talking about as far as ESPN goes. In theory, there could be more hockey on TV. Yes. Because ESPN 2, they could easily throw NHL games on there like every night. (laughs) Yes. Um, I also heard rumors of an ESPN NHL channel, which if that's the case... That'll Bye be bye, on a NHL premium, Network. Yeah, that'll be on a premium tier of your cable bill, and you'll have to pay like 300 bucks a month just to pay for that particular tier. Not a fan of cable television. Um, But from what I've seen, uh, I don't know what the, the deal is yet. They've said that there's um, talks that ABC might be getting the uh, – um, rights to stream or to put out the uh, Stanley Cup, which would be kind of complicated. Thing? How do you figure it would be complicated? NBA Finals. Stanley Cup, same time. It would be a bit of a mess. Not on by stay scheduled Stanley Cup games to fall on the days in between NBA games. Because yeah, we'll you know see. there's like a week off in between games in the NBA playoffs because those players are so exhausted. They need a week to recover. But just yeah, hockey players can play three and three, but they can't play two in a row. Yeah, exactly. They can't play back to back in the NBA to play and in the NHL, they could play three and four. Hey, so shoot, it, if they possible. had to, they'd play four and four. Yeah, it's possible you could do that. But, hey, we'll see how it goes. Uh, And why not? I don't understand with this uh, new NBC, uh, with the NBC deal falling apart now. WWE programming on the USA Network is getting bumped to Tuesday night on the same channel just to accommodate Wednesday night hockey. But if they're not going to be on NBC Universal next season, what's the point? Unless this is their way of going – Okay, NBC, you could still pay us that 200 mil. You can have the Wednesday slot, 
But that could be it, because ain't this like a multi-network type TV? Yeah, I've deal also heard NHL Fox is trying to get their way in too, as well. So, so they're trying to be like NASCAR, having a deal with NBC and ESPN or Disney, technically. Just call it Disney; it's easier. Yeah. Disney yeah, owns Disney everything. owns ABC and ESPN, so they're trying to do deal with NBC Universal and Disney. It works. I'm kind of bummed out we're not going to get those robotic hockey players, but eh, it is what it is. It would be cool, but I'm going to miss it. It's just something us that grew up in the 90s will look back on fondly. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, with that being said, um, there is a lot to look forward to. Um, I've said in the past that there's been – this is a rough season for the Prince. Tell me But about there are some bright spots. Us. Well, we're not alone in that, but there are some bright spots, okay? Illy Tolvanen is proving that he can handle the spotlight, even on Broadway. Yeah, yeah. Um, Carrier and Davies proved they can hang tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you start patting Davies on the back, give him a couple of games. No, I'm... Just I'm, saying. I'm not... Here's the thing. When I say this, Davies has was ready last year. There was a log jam. Yeah. So, you know... Guys like Steven Santini were ready last year. There was a log jam. Yeah, yeah, That's why was. he went to St. Louis and is on their taxi squad. Right. There's a log jam there. <laughs> but with a lot being with a, a lot of the injuries and a lot of everything, these guys are getting valuable ice time. Look, with, with the trades, you're going to see some guys that you normally wouldn't see in the NHL, and you may see glimpses of what we're going to have in the future. Future. So, with that being said, there's a lot to look forward to. Also, Nashville has a lot of pieces they can move. There's some guys that are up on the end of their contract. Uh, Granlin's one of them. Uh, yeah, didn't he just sign a one-year deal just so he'd have somewhere to play this year? Yes. Now, I've heard that he wants an extension, but he could get traded, and then they'll sign him back after the season. That's A uh, signing trade type thing? Well, no, they trade them and then free agency comes and they pull them oh. back. That's, oh. There's a possibility for that. But, yeah, but I think they'd only do that if the salary cap increases. So, with that being said, there's a lot that you could go for. Um, you also have, you know, Arvidsson. As much as I don't want to trade him, he does have his trade value. Um, Forsberg, I would not t- – don't trade him. Keep him. You need – he's in his prime. You can – you don't have to trade everyone to be competitive next year. You Just could trade some guys that have high value. Yeah, trade some guys that have high value for young prospects. You don't particularly need draft picks. You just need high-level prospects. Yeah, so your top-level HL guys is – yeah. And, and the guys who are just about that close away from the NHL. Exactly. Guys that only need, like, another month in the AHL, and then boom, call them up. You know, and, and that'll give you some some leverage because, uh, you know, guy, teams like uh, Toronto and teams like the Flyers and, and uh, not so much Washington. Washington on the defensive side, yes. Uh, Vancouver on the defensive side, they have a lot of prospects. Um, uh, as far as goaltending goes, there's not a whole lot out there, but we really don't need a goaltending prospect, be it that we just drafted one. Yeah, we have plenty of goalies in our system. We need everybody else. Offense, defense, yeah. Um, uh, one thing I would suggest, the next game, play Cascasuo, see what you got before Saros comes back, because yeah. you're going to want to know if you're going to need to move a goalie. If, if a trade comes in that you need to move said goalie, you know, um, just so that you can protect yourself from the expansion draft, it, it, all of this comes down to what are you willing to give up to protect yourself from the expansion draft? The salary cap means nothing right now. Nope. That's like set in stone until the end of next year. So any team that's willing to go over, that's on them. 
that's not our necessary necessarily necessarily our problem so with that being said there's a lot that we could go forward with in nashville um trade deadline is literally what like a month and three days away yeah so i'm fine to the 12th so it's the ninth yeah month and three days roughly so and trade trading ability ends at 1 p.m central time that day we will see what happens. This team may not even look the same when we come back from this road trip. Yeah. Hell, so, it might not look the same tomorrow when we wake up. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of tomorrow, you guys will be seeing us, uh, Florida Everblades, uh, against the South Carolina Stingrays, if I remember correctly. Yeah. You're right. You're right. All right. So, we will be seeing you guys tomorrow. I'm going to let uh, Chris go float off into a food coma, and I'm going to go float off into video game land. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Check out our friends Hockey Locker. Like and follow on Facebook. See you all tomorrow. Really?